Hey, it's Scott Bowman from New Harvest. I'm the pastor at New Harvest, and we're out here at the Crispin Family Farms, and we are going on our first Facebook Live service. I'm Ron Crispin. I'm the worship pastor over at New Harvest, and uh, I think my dad would be proud to be on location in this picnic shelter doing this. But, uh, you know, I think it's ironic when Jesus said on this rock, I will build my church. Um, it didn't mean a building. And I think it's fascinating through all this that we're utilizing a different way of communicating and spreading the gospel and doing what we can with social media as a platform. It might be a rock on a hearth and a fireplace. So today, I just want to let you know that uh, we're going to do our best to uh, update you via Facebook Live as often as possible. Um, we'll do this from a few different venues and in multiple different ways, and we're excited to see how this can reach um, our congregation, but those uh, who are not part of our congregation, and be a blessing to them. Um, and so right now, we're going to share a few songs of worship, but let's open in prayer as we uh, uh, gather together um, not in physical uh, way, but we gather together um, in the spirit and uh, via the internet. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. We pray that, Lord Jesus, that you would speak to hearts and that you would calm fears and that your grace would be present, Lord. Father, we pray that as we worship and praise you and uh, uh, study the word and read the word, Lord Jesus, that your grace would be with us uh, wherever we are today. And Father, that you would be near. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your goodness towards us. In Jesus' name, amen.
we just pray that you would take this time and that you would uh, explode the word before our eyes, that we can see you, that we can hear your voice today. And Lord Jesus, that we can tune in and focus on what really matters, and that is the depth of our relationship with you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I can remember it's like echoing in my mind that uh, my mom yelling at me, listen to me, listen to me, Scott. And, uh, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on in life, uh, we experience lots of voices. I mean, you're hearing voices from uh, the political realm, you're hearing voices from doctors, you're hearing voices from friends and neighbors and your churches, even in your pastors. And the most important thing is, is that we are listening to and tuned in to the voice of God. Um, Spanish philosopher Jose Ortega said that, tell me what you pay attention to, and I will tell you who you are. And there's this beautiful narrative passage um, that reads a lot like what we're going through right now. The book of Acts and uh, is the, in the New Testament church was just vast changes and ups and downs and highs and lows. It was like a roller coaster ride, basically, of the New Testament. And we're living in days that are much similar to that. And uh, we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what we're going to have to do tomorrow. We just know that we are trusting God and that we are trying to fine tune into uh, His voice. And so Acts chapter 27 gives us this narrative of basically uh, a lot like what we're experiencing. And so Paul, as you know, is in chains on his way to Rome. And as he's on his way to Rome, he warns the centurion and says, Listen, this is going to prove to be disastrous to the ship, to the cargo, to everything, uh, maybe even our very own lives. And so in the midst of that, the centurion doesn't listen. He listens to the pilot of the ship and to uh, uh, the owner of the ship. And uh, now you begin to have this contention between you know, conventional sailing wisdom, and then also on top of that, the wisdom of God, uh, which Paul is giving them, and then also um, uh, the pilot's wisdom, human wisdom, if you want to call it that. So there's God's will, human will, and then just conventional wisdom, all in the midst there, and nobody's listening to what Paul says. And so as this entire narrative unfolds, as you know, uh, in Acts chapter 27, the ship uh, is struck immediately after they depart the harbor of Fair Havens. And uh, the wind is, wind is calm when they depart, but then it, it comes a, a hurricane force wind, a nor'easter happens, and the ship is basically driven along. And the first thing they do is, is that they, uh, they, they bind the ship up as best they can. They cast off their tackle, and then they cast away their hopes. And Luke says that they gave up all hope of being saved. Three days and three nights there without being able to see the sun and the stars. And if you have ever sailed before, you know that by navigation in that first century era, there's no way to know your position, where you're at in the world, or where you're at in the sea, and you are totally lost. You know, there's so many parallels to what we're experiencing right now. There's a, a lot of uh, voices out there, but only one voice matters. You know, there's, there's lots of uh, questions of what's going to happen and lostness at sea, if you want to call it that. Um, and even hopes, maybe, in some cases, especially in Italy, where people have just given up hope. And uh, it's how desperate we need to hear the voice of God in the midst of situations that are filled with turmoil. And so if you look at this even deeper, um, you see that they cast the tackle off of the ship. They cast their hopes, if you will, off of the ship. Um, and then finally, at the end, they cast all the cargo off. And even so much to so that uh, Paul warns them, if you let down that lifeboat, that you'll not be saved. You have to stay with the ship. And so they cast away the lifeboat. And there's nothing left but simply to depend on God's like, you know, if you're not hearing God's voice today, you need to get in a position where you're hearing somebody else that hears the word of the Lord. Somebody like Paul in your life that you can listen to them because they're hearing, they're fine tuned in to where God uh, is hearing. And then maybe on top of that, if that's not you, if you can't put yourself in that category where um, 
you, maybe you are hearing the word of the Lord, then you need to be like Paul and speak up and tell people because people's lives depend on you hearing God's word and hearing it well um, so that we can tell other people. Now, uh, personally, we lived in Florida for about nine years and we sailed beach cat catamarans or wet bottom boats with two hulls and um, there was a time that uh, my wife in her wisdom said, I'm not going sailing with you today. Um, so I went out with a friend uh, who loved water sports as much as I do. And we were sailing between storms, but the wind was so perfect between storms that it was just strong enough that we could fly the hull of the boat. And the wind was coming just offshore, so the water was very smooth, the way that it was coming at us out of the west, and the way that the island and the causeway met in Dunedin. It was a beautiful time. And... Uh, we were flying the hall. There were people on on the, the beach who were watching this all happen. I'm like seven or eight feet up in the water, uh, out of the water on the on the boat, and it's tilted sideways as we're going fast across the, the causeway, and people are clapping on the shore. I mean, it was such a adrenaline rush. And then all of a sudden, I knew we were sailing between storms. The second storm hit, and we were still out there in the water. And exactly what Paul describes as not being able to control the ship. I mean, that's exactly what happened to us. We were driven along. I just had to let the, the sail out to a bar, broad reach. And it, and it just, uh, it almost pitch pulled us multiple times. And we just ran into an island, basically, and uh, hid underneath some mangroves away from the 25 foot tall aluminum mast that could be struck by lightning at any time. Um, and you know, I think all of us experience seasons of storms in our lives that uh, it feels like we're just, we're just waiting. We're just being driven along and, uh, until finally we just hit shore and we try to run for protection. And maybe that's how you feel today. Maybe you feel the frustrations of uh, trying to discern God's will amidst the storm. Um, I mean, put yourself in those shoes of those sailors. You know, they didn't, they didn't know who to cry out to. They didn't know who to call upon. And they were probably in their uh, pagan religions crying out to their gods, the gods of the sea, Poseidon, and things like that in Greek mythology. This was a Greek sailing vessel. And yet one man on that ship heard the word of the Lord. And it changed everything. And their lives were saved because God's word was heard. And I think it's very important that we remember how God speaks. If you remember the Old Testament, Elijah, he heard the word of the Lord not in the storm, not in the loudness, you know, he heard the, the word of the Lord in a whisper. I grew up in northern Kentucky, and one of my favorite places to go was the museum at the Union Terminal in Cincinnati. A beautiful historic building, and there's this place in the very corner of that uh, very huge archway in Cincinnati where at Union Terminal you can go over by the water fountain. They call it the Whispering Water Fountains. And right there by that water fountain there's this massive archway. And, you know, one of my brothers or sister would go to one corner and I'd go all the way over like 300 feet away to the other corner. And you could whisper. And because of the design of that archway, it would echo all the way across to the other side and you could hear the whispers. God's whispering to us today. We just need to tune in as close to as we possibly can. I mean, most certainly, if there are whispering places in the physical realm, there are whispering places in the spiritual realm. And I'm asking you today that in the midst of all the turmoil, and the storms, and the, the raging of the seas and the winds of life today, that you would begin to listen to the whispers of God. When I talked about this um, just a few days ago at church at New Harvest, our, our last service on a Wednesday night, physically meeting, one of the men said that uh, he used to ride horses all the time. And he got really into dressage, which is basically the art form of communicating with a horse. So when you are on the back of a horse and, and the movements of the horse mean something, and 
the movements of the rider mean something and there's like this unsaid communication that you have with that massive animal. And I think what God is asking us to do is to tune into the movements of his spirit, to tune into the whispers of his voice so that we can hear him during this time. So really the reality is, is of this entire narrative that we are experiencing in some form or fashion today is, is that if we are finally tuned in to listen to the voice of God, not just we can be saved, but all those around us can be saved. So if you remember, if you're hearing the voice of the Lord today, speak up. Say something to somebody, because their lives may depend on it. If you're not hearing the voice of the Lord today, tune in to somebody who is hearing the voice of the Lord, like the Apostle Paul, and listen to the whispers of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you today. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the grace that you give us. And Lord, we pray that you would be near to us during these days. And Father, that you would speak to us through your word and through your whispers and through the power of your transcendent spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. And the Lord's church says together, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time with Ryan and Scott from New Harvest Assembly of God in Frankfort, Kentucky. Bye-bye.